Hello! In this video we're going to look at helper functions. So helper functions are just functions that a user creates which help to automate common tasks and in general just make your life easier as a developer. So in this video I'm going to create two helper functions. And these are each functions that I've used a bit. So looking at this code right now, this is technically a helper function. It's a function called headliner. You pass it a string, it wraps that string in h1 tags and it returns it. Um, so if you do a lot of h1s, maybe it makes sense to have a function like this. Honestly, I probably wouldn't actually create a function that did that. But one of the things I do do is create a function for debugging arrays. So once you get a little further down the path of development, you're definitely gonna start working with more arrays. And one of the kind of more crude tools that you have available to you is print underscore r. And so you can call this function. It's built-in function for arrays. It works pretty well. If you want to see what's in an array, it's a good way to do it. It'll spit out something like that. Um, so you can kind of see what's going on. Zero PHP, one SQL. Kind of corresponds to that stuff up there. You're not allowed to echo an array, right? That's just not going to happen. So one thing you can do is create a little function to make that output a little bit better looking. So uh, let's do that. So first thing I do is write a function. Right, that just made us the first keyword. Now I got to come up with a name for this function. This function is going to be used to format uh, the contents of an array. I'm going to call it a pretty array because it makes my arrays look pretty. Now for parameters, you're going to pass it an array. So I'm going to call that um, R. I kind of don't like calling it R because that thing's called R. I think I'll just call it A just to make it easier for you to follow. You could call it R. It's it's okay, but I'm going to do that. And then remember a minute ago, I showed you what I did here was a print underscore R of that thing. So that's kind of what I had a minute ago, but you can improve on this by echoing out pre-tags. So you may never have used pre-tags before. These are HTML tags, kind of like what they look like. They're container tags. They are used for pre-formatted text. So they do things like, uh, like they acknowledge when you press enter on the keyboard or just any of that kind of, or like tab presses, the kind of things that normally get ignored, it makes them not get ignored. Oops, I didn't mean to type echo there. That's what happens when I get too busy talking. So this function right here will not only do a print R, but it's gonna wrap, wrap it in pre-tags. Show you how this works. So if I call pretty array and I pass it something like uh, R, it will format it like I asked it to. So this is the original, just print R, and you'll notice when you wrap it in pre-tags, it looks like that, right? That's way easier to look at. Now it's not uncommon to have arrays and nested arrays and hundreds of things in an array, and so this right here is a lot easier to look at. So like I said, that's one of the functions that I do actually use pretty often. What you call it doesn't matter to me, but what it does is it, it makes it it makes the debugging arrays a lot easier. And it's it's highly reusable, didn't require a ton of creativity to create. Very useful function. So another function which is pretty common is a data validation function. So oftentimes if you're collecting input from a user, let's say you wanted uh, that input to be maybe like a, a positive whole number or something like that. It all depends what you're doing, but I think that's a reasonable thing to ask for, right? Maybe you're asking someone for their age or something, so it has to be a positive whole number. So how you would go about that is, right, let's create a function. So I'll say function, and then I have to come up with a name for it. I'll, and so this is going to be looking for positive int, so I can call it pos int if I want. This is definitely going to need at least one parameter. I'll just call it x. I don't know what it is, so you pass it a a number and this thing is going to return true or false based on whether that thing is a positive integer or not and so when you've got something which is going to go one of two directions probably a good choice would be to put together an if structure so I'll say if uh, x is greater than zero right that's going to weed out all the negative numbers the interesting thing that that also does is that weeds out all the like strings and such so if uh, like if you passed this function the word cat, it would just turn it into zero because it doesn't know what to do with it. So that gets rid of the negatives. And the other part of this is that I want x. So you can check for, you can check that x is a po as a whole number several ways. I'm just going to do it the way I kind of like to do it. So I'll say if x. Um, 
is equal to int uh, x. So what that's what I just did is called casting. So when you put a data type in parentheses in front of a variable, you're casting it to an int. So basically, like if you pass this thing 3.5, that's going to get casted to 3 or 4, depending on the language. And so if casting it changed, basically what this is saying right here is if casting it changes its value, well, then it wasn't a whole number in the first place. So if it meets both of those conditions, then I will return true. All right, this is a Boolean function. Otherwise, I'm going to return false. Let me show you two ways. Uh, yeah, I'll show you two ways of doing this. I I'm tempted to do else return false, right? That makes sense. Place. I, I write that a lot. That's a fine approach. Another approach is you don't need an else. In a situation like this, when you're writing a function, as soon as you hit a return, it's done. So you could get rid of the else. I'm not a... Uh, so I do a lot of this when I'm writing my own code, but when I'm teaching a class, I never do it like that. You're allowed to write something like this. So how this works is either this thing evaluates to true, and it returns true, and that's the end of the function, or it returns false. Two different ways of kind of doing the same thing. So there's my val. I want to test that out a little bit. Now this gets a little bit difficult to test. I'll show you what I mean. Um, and that function's called pauseInt. And I'm going to pass it that val. So I'm going to show you something. So what, it's kind of just a general problem with, with testing out a Boolean function. So val is negative 6, so it should fail. So it should return false. Oh, I also need a line break. He, no, I, I, I'm going to put a line break here just to make it a little easier to read. You'll see what happens when you get a zero out of something. So see how it doesn't return anything? That's the way that Boolean functions work, is when you return a false, it doesn't return anything at all. So what you really need to do is pass it a, you can only test that it works positively, I guess. Like, so if I pass it a six, hopefully that works. And you'll see I'll get a one, right? So a positive gives you a one, a false just gives you nothing at all. And so the only case left to do is, uh, let's try a decimal, right? Because that should be wrong too. And as you see, it is wrong. And like I said, let's pass it cat. I think I said cat was what I was going to try. So I'll do cat. And I refresh, and I should get a, a nothing. All right, so debugging a Boolean function is kind of weird because it doesn't return anything in the event that it's false. And you can really only see that it's working if it's true. And so, but anyways, get, I think I spent too much time talking about how to check if something's a whole number. I just created two functions. One, for, which I use commonly to help myself debug the contents of an array, and another function which I just oftentimes need to verify that the input from a form meets a certain set of criteria. So when you find yourself doing something again and again, or if you ever find yourself copying and pasting logical pieces of code, you should ask yourself, can I make this into a function? Sometimes the process of making something into a function is more uh, trouble than it's worth, and sometimes it's not. Sometimes you can create a really... Uh, helpful function and when you start creating several of those functions you can create a library of those functions and when that's what we call helper functions so, so now you know how to create a library of your own useful functions uh, this lends itself really well to a require statement where you could just have this just be a file which is embedded in the top of everything you do so hopefully this helps you to be a more efficient PHP programmer thanks for watching